pilots are an excellent tool for remote temperature measurement. However, having only little experience in this field, there are one or two things which you should know before starting your project. In this tutorial, I will focus on factory calibrated sensors. I will start with some observations using two different calibration sources, and then I will show you with an example how to make our sensors work in your product. Excelitas has a large variety of temperature calibrated sensors. Exemplary for all of them, I will use a sensor from the Calipile family. The calibration constants are stored within the sensor's EEPROM, but the temperature calculation is performed on the host system, giving you the full control over the algorithms. It is important to cover the sensor's field of view as much as possible with the surface you want to probe. In case of small surfaces and long distances, you should consider a sensor with a lens. The sensor here has a field of view of only 5 degrees, which can be recalculated to a distance to spot ratio of about 11. All measurements performed here you can try by your own using the Excelatas demonstration kit. It comes with an application software. In case of the Calipile, you choose the temperature measurement, which will be displayed in this tutorial as an overlay to the recorded experiments. In this setup you can see two black bodies, both set to a surface temperature of 60 degrees C. The sensor is placed in a distance of about 1 cm to the hollow black body. But the factory calibrated temperature output tells you a temperature which is off by 4.7 degrees C. Using the same sensor in front of the smaller black body, which is basically a hot plate, you measure in approximately the same distance only 2.2 degrees C too much. This measurement is repeatable with an accuracy of better than 0.1 degrees C. It seems that the calibration parameters are not valid for those two cases. Now observe the temperature output when retracting the sensor by about 9 cm from the black body. Even with the small measurement spot, which is facing the inner black body, you still are strongly affected by the size and distance to it. The accuracy of the factory calibration as it is given in data sheets is meaningless if you don't have the same laboratory setup in your application. If you change something in the setup, you might be surprised how large the influence can be even when the object is not directly visible by the thermopile. Those are so-called systematic influences, which you must study prior to mass production. So let's try an exemplary application for our factory calibrated sensors. I want to measure contactless the temperature of tea in a cup. What I need is a reference probe immersed by the water. I want to relate the measurement of the sensor with that probe. I'm writing down the numbers as given by the evaluation software and compare them directly with the actual temperature reading of the probe. When the cup is at the same temperature as the ambient, I expect the object and ambient temperature to be the same as the temperature of the probe. In this experiment, I see a deviation of 1 degree C. I fill the cup with boiling hot water. Before I can make an observation, I wait until I see both readings decreasing. The cup does not warm up anymore. The deviation is about 10 degrees C. Without speculating about the reasons for the deviation, I simply try to calibrate the thermopile sensor. The Calipile software allows you to adjust the display temperature by double-clicking the object value and simply entering the correct value. I wait until the probe is displaying the target temperature and confirm by pressing enter. Immediately a scaling factor is displayed. This factor I write down for later reference. In case you are using another type of Excelitas sensor, you need to adjust the emissivity of the object until you obtain the correct reading. Immediately after calibration I observe a deviation of 0.3 degrees C. So the scaling factor is not yet optimal. I leave it and observe the cup cooling down. After a while the deviation is about 0.8 degrees C. I measure down to 55 degrees C and plot the temperature differences as a function of the water temperature. The green line is the mean value. Now I could fine-tune the scaling factor or emissivity such that the offset will be zero and I would reach an accuracy of about 0.2 degrees C. In fact, you need to test the sensor in your application for all operating conditions. So at least you must vary the ambient temperature and you will obtain a two-dimensional accuracy plot for your calibrated sensor. The more you measure, the better you understand your setup. One important advice is to search for systematic influences. Once you know them, you can initiate countermeasures, or at least you can try to compensate for those. In this application, you can already see some reflections on the surface of the cup. Those reflections are also visible in the infrared spectrum when a person is passing by the cup. Also, we know the distance of the object being a critical parameter. The position of this cup was changed and in this application I could see an influence of about plus minus 0.3 degrees C around the mean offset of 0.5 degrees C. 
you should make sure that the sensor is at the same temperature as the ambient, otherwise you can spoil your accuracy. You can see it by touching the sensor with your warm hands. What I did not show are further influences, such as the dependence on the water level, the material of the cup, the stabilization time and many more. Only once you have understood your tolerances and accuracies, you should check if you can apply the same correction factor also to other sensors. I keep the setup as fixed as possible. I use a tweezer to keep the sensors at ambient temperature. I exchange the sensor and restart the temperature measurement in the software. Now I adjust the emissivity value to be about the correction factor from the reference measurement and confirm it with the set button. I write down all deviations for several sensor samples, but I also replace the first sensor several times to see the placement tolerance. At the end, I can see that the factory calibration is at least as accurate as my placement tolerance. As a summary of this short experiment, I can say that you can achieve an accuracy of better than 0.5 degrees C with our factory calibrated sensors. Of course, statistical relevance is only given with the larger sample bases. As you can see, you actually can achieve a high accuracy in your application. At the end, it is only a question of the efforts you have to spend to realize your idea. As always, in case you need more support, just come back to us.